Uh, we're gonna start in two minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, I hope you are able to see the, the slides. Yes, we are. Okay, so welcome to your last, last content session that we're going to have for this year. Um, I take note that your exam is on the 15th of October as a preliminary date it might change or it might be the date that you are writing so we're working towards that date so it means since this is the last content and then we're going to have the activities for regression or for study unit 11 on saturday then on Wednesday next week, we're going to go through the system and look at study unit uh, 10 and 11 questions online, on my UNISA online. I'm, I'm not going to create notes for it. I'm going to create an online uh, assignment on our Twitter site, so uh, but I will share my my UNISA when we go through it. Uh, so we'll do that, and then as a, as one of the practice activities, and then on Saturday we're going to also continue with the uh, regression and your chi square test. Then I'm going to leave you to do. Uh, to do your assignments on your own and then if you have any questions on the f on uh, when when is the assignment due on the date on the second or the 30th uh, the 30th when is your assignment five due i think it's it's the 20th is it the 20th i think so on this Friday. Uh, let me check yeah i have it as the 20th uh, remember, you must check on the assi on the assignment, not on on the calendar or something. You must check exactly the date on the assessment too. It says Wait, August. It says thirty August. Thirty August. Yes. yes. So th that's the date I also remember. It's on the thirtieth. So yeah. So then on the other days you can work it out on your. On your own so that you can complete it but for the next couple of sessions we're going to do activities relating to activity to study unit 10 and study unit 11. okay so today we're going to start looking at the regression and correlation and coefficient of determination i know that the session is titled regression uh, but yeah, it contains or it includes regression, uh, correlation, and coefficient of determination. 
by the end of today's session, you should be able to make inferences about the coefficient of correlation, meaning you should be able to interpret it and also be able to interpret the coefficient of determination. You should be able to develop a regression model or, the, or, or come up with the equation of the regression line and you should be able to use the equation of, a, uh, of the regression line to predict a new value. And also you should be able to interpret some of the coefficients um, that comes from the regression line, which is your intercept and your slope. You should be able to interpret them. Okay, so what is regression or correlation. So we're going to start with the correlation side of things. I'm going to do, there are a lot of uh, like calculations that you need to do. So just bear with me. If you don't understand something today, do not panic. Uh, on Saturday, we can also spend more time looking at the information. So for today, I just want to concentrate more on the content and then we can start looking more in, t in, in terms of the questions and how they ask the question on Saturday more specifically. So there will be, I will show you how to use your calculator to do most of the calculation. And I will also show you how to do the calculations on Excel itself. I have sent an Excel template to you but I will show you how to use it um, in this session as well. So regression and correlation. So when we talk about correlation, we're talking about the relationship. When we talk about regression, we're talking about predicting a value. Both of these two, so we can use the regression to predict a new value, but with that regression, there is a relationship that needs to exist between two variable in order for you to be able to see uh, whether that uh, the new value, what would, what would it be? In terms of the correlation, it, we use it to determine or to, to test if there is a relationship between the two variable. And we can visualize the relationship between two variables, because when we have two variables, the only visualization tool that we can use really is the scatter plot. So with with a scatter plot, it will help us to show the relationship that exists between two numerical values. Okay. So what is a scatter plot? Is just a visualization tool used to show or visualize the relationship between two variables. Correlation, on the other hand, is a numerical value that you get that tells you whether the if or it tells you if there is a relationship between the two variables and it can tell you in two different things. It can give you or when you calculate the coefficient of correlation or the correlation, it can tell you the magnitude or it can tell you the direction. So in terms of the magnitude I'm talking about, it can tell you the strength of that relationship so whether this, the relationship is strong or weak, and it can also tell you the direction, whether it's positive or it's negative. So that's what correlation will do. It will tell, it, it will give you a value or a measure that tells you the strength of that relationship or the association. Okay, I've already said that. Um, in terms of correlation, does not equate to causation. So when two things are correlated, does not mean one caused the other. It just means that they have the same relationship, but does not mean X causes Y to happen. It doesn't mean that. 
So there are different types of relationships that you can see when you put your data on a scatter plot. So these are the scatter plot. And the first on your left side, you will see that there are two relationships, and those we call them the linear relationship. They are called linear relationship because if I draw a correlation line or a regression line, which is the black line, if I draw the, reg the regression line across those dots, I will see a pattern images. And that will tell me whether that relationship is positive. If the line goes up, 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 and for all the values of X, when they are increasing, the values of Y are also increasing because then the line will go up. Then we say X and Y are positively related. If the values of Y are increasing, but the values of Y are decreasing, here we say, the relationship is negative. We can also have, apart from having a linear relationship, we can have a cavalier relationship, which is a curve linear relationship. And the first one is what we call a quadratic relationship. So it's like when you bounce a ball. When you bounce a ball, it goes up and then it comes down. So that takes a form of a uh cavalier relationship and what that shape we call it a quadratic relationship we also have a relationship called the exponential relationship um and if you can remember early in the beginning when COVID hit when they were doing daily reports every day telling us about COVID, at some point they were showing us graphs that shows exponentially or an exponential growth in terms of the number of COVID. And that is what exponential relationships looks like. So with the number of days, when the days are increasing, the number of COVID-19 infections were also increasing exponentially. And that is a relationship as well. We can also have no relationship in this instance. So therefore, when data is scattered everywhere, there is no pattern in that. We cannot tell whether when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are increasing, then this will say there is no relationship. Or when the value, one value is static, it doesn't change, there's no variation. We also say yeah, that there is no relationship. But we can use a coefficient of, the, of correlation to calculate the magnitude of that relationship as well in order for us to determine that this, the coefficient of correlation for this is equals to zero because when R is equals to zero, then there is no relationship. We're going to look at an example later on. So what is coefficient of correlation? Like I said, Correlation deals with the strength. Coefficient of correlation is just that measure that we calculate to tell us the strength and the direction. So, since it tells us the strength and the direction, therefore it means when you do the calculation, the value of R, because coefficient of determination is denoted by R, the value of R should be between negative one and one. Remember with probabilities as well, we said this, the probability should just be between zero and one. So with coefficient of, of correlation, or with correlation coefficient, the value of R should only be between negative one and one. If it's bigger than that, then there is something wrong that you did when you're doing the calculation. If the value of R is positive, which means it's greater than zero, then we say the relationship is positive, which means when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are also increasing. 
when r is negative, which means r is less than zero, it means there is a negative relationship or the correlation is negative. Then it means when the values of x are increasing, the values of y are decreasing. If your correlation coefficient r is equals to zero, then there is no relationship. Therefore, the x and y are not related. Sometimes I, uh, you, you might want not only to say this is a positive relationship or a negative relationship, but you also need to include the magnitude of that relationship and say this is a weak or, or what you call the strength, which is a weak, a moderate, a strong, a perfect. You want to say it in that manner. So in order to do that, there is a scale that you can use. So if R is equals to negative one, we say that relationship, the strength is a perfect, the direction is a negative relation, which is negative correlation. And it will also happen with the positive. If R is positive one, it will say it is a perfect positive relationship. If the value of r falls between a negative one and zero a negative 0 0.79 we say there is a strong negative relationship so it means between 0 0.79 and one we can also assume that it is a perfect relationship or a strong relationship depending on how the definition you want to to use so you you can relate them to a perfect relationship as well so if they are between 0 0.79 and 0 0.39 we say it's a moderate relationship at least and if living, yes um i just want to know those uh numbers is it a fixed number or is it just an example it's just an example. It will depend on you and whoever, or you will you will you will see. It's like it's not a it's not a fixed scale. Um, so it's just a guidance in terms okay. of if if you are given zero point six nine, are you going to say it's a strong relationship? It's not that strong, but it is a moderate relationship. Like when it's fifty percent. It's just a moderate relationship. It's a 50-50. But if it's 0 0.15 or 0 0.10, which is almost close to, to zero, you, you have a leeway to say whether is it a weak relationship or there is no relationship between that. Because 0 point, a 10% is like so small. So you have your own choice to say how you will define that um because then when it equals to zero exactly equals to zero we say there is no relationship at all some people also yeah in terms of the weak relationship sometimes it starts at 35 not at 39 so i've put my one my scale higher so it will also depend. So different books as well defines it different. Sometimes even they don't even have so many scales. They only have two scales it, I, or three scales. It's either perfect, strong and weak or no relationship. That's it. Um, so but depending on how they question you and you can just use this as a guide as well. So the same will happen when it is a positive relationship. You will also look at the magnitude and the direction and then make your decision. OK. So, so far, that is just the theory. How do we calculate that? To calculate a, the R, when you get an answer, uh, we will do the calculation later. So let's look at some of the examples when we have a scatter plot. So if we look at this scatter plot and we calculate the R and we find that R is equals to one for this scatter plot, 
Therefore, this, when we interpret it, we'll say this is a perfect positive relationship because the value of R here is positive. And this also shows us that when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are increasing. The next one, you can see that the dots are spread, but the relationship here is, or your coefficient of correlation here is R is equals to 0 0.18, which means this is a weak relationship. Um, but also when you look at the dots, it shows that when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are also at least increasing a little bit. But what's most important is what is the sign of R when you are looking at the graph, because that will help a lot in terms of the interpretation of your correlation or your relationship. On this one, the R on this graph is 0 0.85. As you can see that it clearly shows when the values of R or when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are also increasing and this is a strong positive relationship as well. And this one, you can see that when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are declining, and our R is negative 0 0.92. Therefore, this is a strong negative relationship. Always remember that when you calculate the coefficient of correlation, the value of R is going to be between negative one and one. And also, when you look at your R, if it's equals to one, then we say those are perfect correlations that exist, or that is a perfect relationship. And the more closer the value of R comes to one, the more related the values of your variables are. You will be expected to know how to calculate the coefficient of correlation using the sum square measures or using uh, so they might give you the sum square measures and ask you to calculate the coefficient of correlation, or they might give you a table and you can use your calculator, or you can use Excel to calculate. But in terms of the sum square measure, in order for us to calculate the coefficient of correlation, we can use the sum sum, these are the sum square, sum square because it's two SS, sum square measure of X, which is the summation of your X value minus the mean. So for all your observation of X, you subtract the mean, square them, add them, all of them together. That will give you the sum square of X. Sometimes with the summation, it will be the sum square minus the sum sum of X squared divided by N. Those two are totally different. We will look at this in more detail when we do the activities and exercise. The sum square measure for y will be the sum of your y minus the mean of y squared, which you can also calculate it by using the sum y squared minus the sum of y squared divided by n. So once you have those sum squares, they will go at the bottom of your coefficient of correlation. You also need to get the sum square measure of your X and Y of the product of X and Y, which will be the sum of your X minus your X bar times Y minus your Y bar, which you can also write it as the sum of X minus the sum of X times the sum of y divided by n. And that will be at the top, it will be your numerator. 
So in terms of the formula for R, which we will use later on, you will see that we're not using the sum XY, the sum sum XY, we're using R is equals to the sum of X and Y minus the sum, which is this part, the sum of X times the sum of Y, divide by N, divide by the square root, and I'm going to do it separately. You will see the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n times the sum of y squared minus the sum of y squared divided by n. The formula will look like this, or the formula can look like this. R is equals to, so there are different ways. So don't get alarmed when we see different formulas. There are different, they are the same, but they calculate the same thing. They look different, but they calculate the same thing. Sum of X times sum of Y divided by N times the sum of X squared minus the sum of y, uh -uh, the sum of x, so it should still be sum of x, sum of x squared times the square root of oh, n times, I must not forget the n, n times the sum of y squared minus the sum of y, everything squared divide by A. So all these formulas, they calculate the coefficient of correlation. One, two, three, all of them, they do the same. They calculate the coefficient of determination. Also including this one also, you can create it in this manner, the sum of X minus, so you can take this, divide by the square root of those two. We'll still give you the same. So when we, later on, also when we do the, coefficient, uh, the regression line. There is a coefficient of regression line called the slope. We can use the sum square measures as well to calculate the slope because the slope is just your sum square measure, which is this divide by that, which is for the slope. You will see when we when we do the activity and exercise later on. Lizzie? And we're going to use this, yes? Sorry, just took, uh, are you done? I just wanted to make a comment. Yes, you can. No wonder relationships are so difficult. Look at these formulas. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it's so complex. <laughs> That's a good one. <clears throat> okay, so, we can also calculate what we call the sum square, uh, the sum of uh, the measures of variation by using the sum square measures. So the measures of variation. So in order for us to calculate the total variation, which is your SST, which is your total sum square, uh, total sum of squares measure is given by your SSR, which is the regression sum of squares or sum, sum of squares, uh, sum of squares regression measure plus your error of sum of squares or sum of square errors, or we call it the SSE. So in short, I'm not going to use the long names. SST is equals to SSE plus SSR. And expanded formula for those, uh, we, we, when we do some examples on Excel, I will show you how to calculate those as well using this. Usually <clears throat> in the exam, they will give you the measures so that you don't have to go and scratch your head and all, all that. So they might give you SSR and SST and they ask you to calculate the coefficient of determination. So also you can use the SSRs and the SSTs to calculate other measures as well from there. 
So <clears throat> I'm not going to go into detail on to this slide. It's just for your information, which is what we just explained there. They just discuss what your SST and your SSR and your SSE are in terms in relation to how you explain them. I'm not going to go into details on that. So once you have your coefficient of correlation, which is your R, you can use your value of R to calculate your R squared because on your calculator, you just press the X squared button or you take your R and multiply it to, to itself again or by itself. And then that will give you a coefficient of determination. And you can also, if you're not given R, but you are given your sum square measures of regression and <clears throat> your sum square measure total or the total sum square of measures, then you can calculate your R squared because it's R, uh, SSR divided by SST. What is coefficient of determination? A coefficient of determination like because it uses the total variation it just gives you the proportion of the total variation in the dependent variable that is explained by the independent variable so we want to see what is that percentage of the independent variable that has an influence on what happens to the dependent variable you need to know how to also explain the coefficient of determination in terms of that proportion. And explaining, explaining it is just replacing the proportion with the actual value and then rewriting the whole sentence as it is. And replacing the dependent variable and independent variable with the actual values that you are using. So let's say my dependent variable is the price of bread and my independent variable is the sales of bread. So all the, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call it the sales of bread because that is how many number of people are buying the bread. So, and I've calculated my coefficient of determination and I found that it was 12%. So how do I interpret this? I will say 12% of the total variation in the price of bread it is explained by the variation in the number of sales of bread we have or people bought. That's how you're going to interpret it. Just as straightforward as that. Okay. So, like I said, coefficient of determination is R squared, which we just use the X squared to calculate it if you have the coefficient of determination. And your coefficient of determination lies between zero and one because it's you squaring the value. So even if you get your R of negative 0 0.86, when you get your coefficient of determination R squared, because you are squaring that negative number, it will become positive. So that is why it can never be more than or less than a zero or more than a one. So, if you, if you calculate R squared, it will be, you just press the X. So for this, your R squared will be zero comma, Seven four. If I leave everything to four decimals, zero comma seven four, and that will be your coefficient of determination. Now, if they give you the SSR, you just substitute the value of your SSR and the SST, and then calculate. In terms of the scatter plot and how we interpret the coefficient of determination. When it is negatively related, your R squared will be equals to one because this is a perfect negative relationship. Therefore, also for a positive relationship where your R is equals to one, 
how you interpret it because it's equal your r is is one which will be 100 percent you say 100 percent of the variation in y is explained by the variation in x and you will see that the pattern emerges the same way for all the other uh, scatter plots and the how you define your r so let's look at when r is not equals to one or when r squared is not equals to one so for this one because this is a weak relationship as you can see by the look of the scatter plot here yeah, how because if you don't if you are not given the the value the actual value but you're given the scatter plot and you don't know what the amount is of that total variation you cannot use randomly and suck the numbers so you can say some but not all of the variation in the values of y are explained by the variation in x so as you can see we only replaced it there but if we knew that if this was um your r squared whether it's positive or negative it will not matter uh, if your r was positive or negative for both of them so let's say the r is 0.36 so you will say 36 percent of the variation in y is explained by the variation in x because you have the number so you will use the actual value so when r is equals to zero because there is no relationship because if r is equals to zero then it means your r squared will also be equals to zero and therefore it means there is no relationship between your x and your y and how you will interpret the r squared you will just say the value of y does not depend on the value of x because none of the variation in the values of y can be explained by the variation in the values of x let's look at an example yeah you need to this is your exercise actually let me make it your exercise Suppose that the correlation coefficient between a person's salary and his or her education attainment is equals to 0, 0,6395. Calculate the coefficient of determination. That is your exercise. What is R squared? I get 0 0.40896. 0 0.409. 4096. Sorry, sorry. 0 0.40896. 41% in the person's salary can be explained by the variation in his or her education attainment. And that's how we interpret R squared. How will we interpret that R? The R will just say this is a moderate, uh, it's a strong, because it's between 0 0.39 and 79, so it's a strong relationship. We say this is a strong positive correlation or relationship whichever one you want to use still mean the same thing okay 
Okay, any questions before we move on to regression? Okay, no questions. So in terms of the regression, so we said the correlation tells us the relationship. Regression assists us to predict or get a new value, to predict a value in the future. We can use it to forecast a new value. So a regression is used to predict the value of your dependent value or dependent variable based on the value of at least one of the independent variable. Because here we're using one independent variable, so we can safely say depending on one independent variable. And the regression analysis or the regression helps to explain the impact of the changes in the independent variable on the dependent variable. And that change, we, we can see that impact of change by using the slope. Because if you did math in high school, and you remember we had y is equals to mx plus c, mx plus c as the equation of a straight line, which is the same as your correlation or regression line. That is the regression line or the equation of a straight line. So the slope, which is m, for every value of x we want to calculate, so if this is x1 and x2, they correspond to, x1 corresponds to y1, and x2 corresponds to, to y2. So in order to see the impact, we're going to use our m, which will tell us the changes that exist in the values of y2. Y of y by the value of y uh, x. So, and that is the slope. And that will tell us that impact. And the slope also can tell us the direction of this line, whether it's negative or it's positive. So it can tell us that. The value that you see on your M or your slope will tell you whether the direction of this line is negative or it's positive. In your module, instead of using Y is equals to MX plus C, Y is equals to MX plus C, we use Y is equals to B1 x plus b0 because we rewrite the whole thing as y is equals to b0 plus b1x so you will notice that also in the entire module or in the entire slide we might be using this as such on your calculator you will see and now i'm going to confuse you even more On your calculator, the equation is written like this, which still means the same thing. For our slope m, which is our slope, is the same as b1 with the subscript 1, b with the subscript 1, and is the same as the capital letter b. So on the calculator module, met. I'm just going to just write it like that so that you understand where I'm coming from. So the rest of the module, we're going to be using B1 because in your study guide, I think you're using B1. In the textbook, I think they're using B1. On your calculator, we use B. So don't get confused. You need to write all this down because when we start doing activities and exercises and we start using our calculators, I don't want you to get confused. So in terms of the regression, 
that impact i've already said that so we what we do with this is just to calculate this change and that change of the value of your y by the value of your x this triangle is the change is that slope that's what we calculate with the slope and that's what we get okay let me erase all that so our dependent variable is the variable that we want to predict whereas our independent variable is the variable that we are using to predict the value of your y so always remember that your x is your independent independent let's go 50 50 one common to independent independent and your y value is your depend dependent like somebody already made a joke so you must just remember everybody who has a x the x wanted to become independent so they <laughs> Okay. Now, the regression line, that line that I was talking about, that regression line, which we, we represent it as y hat, is equals to b0 plus b1x, which is the regression line, where the y hat is the value that we are predicting, or we can predict. The b0 is your intercept, b1 is your slope, and the x is your x value so when you complete the regression line only these two values needs to be numeric numeric the others they stay as they are y hat is y hat x is x on the equation so it means your final equation of the straight equation of a straight line when you write it at the end it will look like this y is equals to three plus 4x and that is your equation of a of a straight line or the regression line or it can be y hat is equals to 120 minus 15x that still is your equation of a straight line so your y hat and x do not replace them you need to know what your b is so your b1 which is the slope this one tells me that this regression line is negative so it means the graph goes like this this one tells me plus four tells me that it goes like that now in terms of the intercept this intercept b0 it is when x is equals to zero this y will be equals to three If x is equal to zero, so therefore if this value here it becomes zero, this whole thing will be equal to zero. Therefore, the estimated value will be equal to three. That is that intercept. We will learn how to interpret it just now. Okay. So this is the equation we use to find the relationship between or to describe the relationship between x and y which will we use it as a linear function and it helps us to interpret the value of the slope because we are able to use that to see if the changes in y are assumed to be related to the changes in x because then if it's positive then the changes in in y are positively related or oh, the changes in x are positively influenced by the changes in x the value of b0 is the estimated average of y when x is equal to zero and i think i've just explained it just now and the value of b1 
is the estimated change in the average value of y as a result of one unit increase in x. So you must just remember that when we move one unit increase, what will be the new value of y? When you move one unit increase, what will be the value of? So that is what it means. It means the when we move one unit, how much our value of our new y will increase by in terms of that one unit? <clears throat> Let's look at an example. A FEM personnel department hired employees to give a job primarily on the basis of the results of an aptitude that was administered to all job applicants. The performance of those hired was rated on the same scale by their supervisors. A year later, they were hired. A sample of test grades and the supervisor assigned grades is as follows. And there we have our X values of the test, aptitude test, and the supervisor grade, which is our Y. And since there are two numerical values, we can take them and visualize them on a scatter plot to look at the, dis um, the relationship between the aptitude test and the supervisor's grade. And we can see if we draw a regression line, it fits the value and it shows that there is a positive relationship that exists with at least one individual outlier that is sitting there. And remember an outlier, an outlier is the extreme value. It's a value that is far away from the rest of the other values. So now we have a scatter plot. We have this. Let's calculate the coefficient of correlation. Let's find the regression line or the coefficient of determination. We can use Excel to do this. Easy. Taking our X and Y, on Excel or any statistical tool, it can produce a table that looks like this. On this table, there are several things that you can take note of. The regression statistics uh, block, which has the multiple R and the R squared, and the coefficient table, which has the intercept and the test grade. The multiple R is our coefficient of correlation. So you will get the coefficient of correlation. The R squared is your coefficient of determination. And the two coefficients here at the bottom, remember, our equation is Y hat is equals to B0 plus B1X. So our intercept Remember, B0 is our intercept, so it will be 7,125. And our slope, which will be the test grade, it will be 0, 0,625. And that is the regression line completed. Supervisor grade, which is our Y hat, is equals to 7,125, which is our intercept, plus 0, 0,625, which is our coefficient of test grade. Multiply by the test grade because our test grade is X. And we do not substitute it. If, let's say, we want to find, let's go back to the, yeah. Let's say we want to find the uh, new value of Y if, our test grade, our aptitude test was four. What will be the supervisor grade? Can we find that? So in order for us to find the new supervisor grade, we're going to use 7,125 plus 
zero comma six two five and we know our new text test grade is four and we can just calculate that and that will be uh, can somebody calculate it seven point one two five plus point six two five into bracket four close bracket equals nine point six two five and our new supervisor grade will be nine point six two five Please keep that number somewhere because when we do the activity on our calculator or on the Excel spreadsheet, we can calculate that as well. Okay, so that will be the regression on Excel, the output. It will look like this. The others don't worry about them because it's not part of your syllabus. It's for other modules to worry about. But for you, you just need to know only those four things that I've ticked. OK, so let's calculate manually now. If we have a question that says from the same information that we had, we need to calculate the least square regression line, which is your regression line. Y hat is equals to B0 plus B1x. And we also need to find the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination, if those were the questions asked. Remember, our data was given to us, our X and Y data. Um, okay, so my slides are out of, out of order because then I, we did discuss this. Remember that when we were do, looking at the sum square measures, remember we were looking at the sum of X and Y minus the sum of X times the sum of Y divided by N. We looked at something that looks like this. We also note that we had sum of X squared and sum of Y squared. We also had, what else did we have? We, we, yeah, we had some of those um, summations. So in order for us, when we calculate these things manually to get those summations, the sum of X will just be adding one plus three plus five plus five plus one will give us the total of 15. That is the summation of X. So the summation, summation of X will be equals to 15. The summation of y will be equals to 45 because we just adding all of these values. So in order for us to calculate the summation of x and y, which means the summation of the product of x and y is not 15 times 45. It is 1 times 4, 3 times 6, 5 times 10. That's why we get 50. 5 times 12, 50. When we add all of this value, which will be the summation of X and Y, will give us 145. Summation of X squared is not 15 squared. It is 1 squared, which is 1, 3 squared, 9, like that. You do all of them. When you get to the summation of X squared, you get 61, and so forth. So this will be the summation of Y squared. You can also calculate the mean, which is your uh, the mean the mean bar for x will be the sum of your x divided by n, which is 15 divided by n. n is how many there are, so n will be one, two, three, four, five. So n will be five, and you just say 15 divided by five will give you three. You can calculate it. Then. Once you have calculated the, your summations and all that, then you can find your regression line. You can go and calculate the coefficient of correlation. And using the coefficient of correlation, you can calculate the coefficient of determination. So let's look at the first one. In order for us to find the regression line, remember our table? 
So I've calculated separately on the side all the values that I need. So how do we calculate B0 and B1? Calculating B0 and B1, working it backwards, we need to do this regression line. The first thing that we need to calculate is B1 because in order to calculate B0, we need B1. So we first calculate B1, and this is the formula to calculate B1. The sum of X and Y, or the product of X and Y, minus the sum of X times the sum of Y, divided by N, divided by the sum of the sum square measures of X, which is the sum squared minus the summation of X times uh, times the summation of x or the summation of x squared divided by n. In order also to calculate b0, we need the mean and mean of y and the mean of x and the b. So I forgot to change my b here because I adapted these slides from another session. So this should be b B1. <clears throat> so to calculate that, we need the mean of y or the mean of x. But we already calculated it. I didn't have to do it that way. But anyway, anyway I'm going to just show you. So let's first start by calculating the slope, substituting the values. We know so that. Maybe. Yes. Um, so B1 will be the mean of y and the mean of x. What? If you want to calculate B uh, zero, no, sorry, B one. No, sorry, it's B zero. Is it then the mean of Y and the mean of X? Nope. Uh, let's let's do it correctly so that you don't get confused. So this is supposed to be B one. So it means I have to resend the slide. Uh, sorry. Need to go there. Just for that one error there. I, will f I fixed it. Sorry. Remember, for B1, to calculate B1, we use this formula for B1, which is the slope. To calculate B0, we need the mean, the slope, the mean of Y minus the slope times the mean. So that is the formula for B0, which is the intercept. Okay, so to calculate the slope, which is B1, we substitute the values. Your sum of x, summation of x and y, which is 145 minus the sum of x, 15, the sum of y, 45, divided by n, which is 5, divided by 61, which is the sum squared, 61. The sum squared is 61 minus the sum of y, which is 15 squared divided by n. And then that will give us 0, 0,625. Remember that. That's what we got when we looked at the Excel as well. Output. Then calculating the mean of y is just the sum of y divided by n, which gives us 9. Same. Mean of x, the sum of x, which is 15, divided by 3. Now we have our slope, the mean of y, the mean of x, we can just substitute into the formula. The mean of y is 9 minus 0 0.625 times 3. And the answer we get is 7.125. What we do is just substitute all these two values onto the formula. B0 
is 7.125 and B1 is 0, 0,625. And as you can see there, we have the same regression line. The supervisor stats uh, uh, grade will be, the regression line for that will be 7,125 plus 0, 0,25x. And if we want to estimate the value of, if we want to estimate the value, the new value of x, whether we want to calculate for 8 or for 2, then you can just substitute the value onto there, like we did with 4. And that is the regression. How do we calculate the coefficient of, of correlation? Calculating coefficient of correlation using the same summations. Remember, this is the formula to calculate the coefficient of correlation, the square root, uh, sorry, n times the summation of x and y, which are your sum, your sum square measures, summation of x and y minus the summation of x times the summation of y. Divide by the square root of n times x squared minus x squared sub, uh, squared times n times the summation of y squared minus summation of y squared. Substitute the values into the formula. Tarara. Every value into the formula, the points. n is 5. Summation of x and y is 45 minus the summation of x is 15. Summation of y is 45. Divide by the square root of the 5 times summation of x squared is 61 minus the sum of x 15 squared times n is 5. The summation of y squared is 465 minus the summation of y, 45 squared. When you solve this, you get the value of 0, 0,3227, which is exactly the same as what we got when we used the Excel sheet. And the answer is 0, 0,32. Or it's... 32%. And if we want to interpret this, we can interpret this by saying this is a positive, is it a weak or a strong? It's a positive weak relationship that exists. Okay. And this is mainly because of that one outlier that was there. So if I look at this one, the slope, remember the slope will tell me that um, uh, whether it's a positive relationship and there it's a positive slope. So it will tell me that this is a positive relationship that exists between the supervisor score and the aptitude test score. So how do we interpret the regression line that we had in so terms of we, B0? Yes. Can we just go a step back? Um, Somewhere I got lost. How did you calculate your N? Your? Your N. N. N is just counting how many numbers you got. So we have one, two, three, four, five rows. From the original data set. So let's go back to the original data set. So how many... Uh, Employees did they hire? They hired one employee, two employees, three employees, four employees, five employees. So your N is five. N is always the total number of your sample. Thank so they you. hired five employees. So what I didn't do before I go to the interpretation as well, remember the question said, also calculate the coefficient of determination. So your coefficient of determination is just taking your R. So it's just saying 0, 0,32 squared. Or you can use 0, 0,3227 because we only round off at the final answer. Let's take 0, 0,22 
squared. And that will be 0.3227 squared is 1, 0, 1041. And that's the coefficient of determination. How we interpret the regression line? The B0, which is the intercept or B0, the intercept. We normally do not interpret it because the intercept tells us that when the x value here is zero, the average grade of a supervisor will be equals to zero. Sometimes it does not make sense to interpret it because, for example, let's say we're calculating the, uh, the weight of a baby. And the answer here we got was, 0, 0,334. Let's say uh, it's 0, 0, 0,2. And that's x. So if we calculate the weight of a baby and we say we want to know what the average is, Uh, what the average or the average estimated average value will be, then this will be equal to zero, and therefore it means we say the weight of a baby on average will be 0, 0,34, which does not make sense because how can you have a baby who weighs that much? That means that baby doesn't exist. So we cannot. Uh, interpret the B0, you can just acknowledge that that will be your estimated average value when your X or when your independent variable is equals to zero. That's the only thing that you can say about that. The only value that you can interpret real in do a real interpretation is your slope. Because we know that for every one unit increase in the values of your x, there will be an increase or there will be a decrease in the values of y. Because when there is an increase in the values of y, the change that will show as an increase in the value of y. So if it's increase in y, then we say that is a positive relationship when there is a decrease in y then the slope is negative so how will you interpret that for example with this one is a positive one we say <coughs> <coughs> we will say that for the slope of 0, 0.625 the, then it means, in terms of the test grades, it means that the mean value of your supervisor grade will increase by 0, 0.625 on average for one unit increase in the value of your test grade. So for every one unit increase, so if this one was one, therefore it means your test grades of your supervisor will increase so we'll add 0, 0.625 to that <clears throat> and that's what the slope interpretation looks like <clears throat> <clears throat> so how you interpret your slope will just say there will be a <clears throat> 0, 0.25 increase in the value of your test supervisor for every additional one unit increase in the value of your test grade or your aptitude test grade. 
that is very important. If this value here was negative, if this was negative, then yeah, it would have said there is a decrease, it will decrease by 0 0.6254, every one unit additional or one unit increase in the value of your test rate. <clears throat> because th this value will decrease by 0 0.25. Okay, <clears throat> we are not done. I'm just going to summarize. We still <clears throat> have a long way to go. So far, what we have learned, we've learned how to use the regression analysis to predict a new value, like we did with the four, to predict a new dependent variable based on the new x variable independent variable. We've learned how to interpret the coefficient of of correlation, or oh, sorry, the coefficient of regression, which are your slope and your intercept. B zero meaning the intercept, and B one being your slope. We also uh, looked at how we use the coefficient of determination and coefficient of correlation, how we calculate them and how we interpret them. So now I just want to show you on your calculator, we're going to use the same exercise that we did. I'm not going to use this one because we don't have the answers for these values that I have on here. Uh, <clears throat> so those who are using the case here, you will find the steps. I've added them on the slides. You press the mode function first, then you will get a, a menu with Uh, one for comp, two for stat. So you will select two for stat. We're going to go to number two, which says A plus BX. That's the one because that, hey, remember our equation is Y is equal to B0 plus B1X. So we're going to use Y is equal to a plus b x which is that one that you see there we select two we press two and then your calculator will show state one and then now you're ready to capture your data when capturing your data you will need the equal sign and the number function so if we capture in this information that is in front of us we just press you will have the, once you, you click on the, the the number two and then it says that one it will also show you the table that looks like this and you just press e, uh, the number that you you have that is four and then you press equal so you will have to only capture one column first and then do the next one so we first going to do the x values and then we move to the right to do the y values. So you just press four equal, two equal, six equal, four equal until you do the whole table. And then you use your arrows to go up to number one and then go left, oh sorry, right of number one. And then you start capturing the values of y. When you capture the value of y, make sure that you capture them as they appear. So four corresponds with five. So it means on the Y for the first line, you're going to put five. For two, you're going to put three, six, you're going to put seven on your Y column until you complete the whole table. Do not mix match the values. Otherwise, you're not going to get the right answer. So you need to make sure that they align. Okay, so once you have captured all your information, you can press the AC button. And then you press shift and then press button number one. There is a stat 
function on button number one. When you press shift because it's orange, it will call up that function. And the menu like this will appear. Let's use a pointer. The menu like this will appear. And the type will mean the type of data. You don't have to worry about that. The data will take you back to the table that you created. The sum, the sum will have your sum summation of x and y, summation of x squared, summation I will show you just now. And the var is your sum, uh, your mean, your standard deviation, and um, and uh, what else? It's just the mean and the standard deviation on the var. The reg is where you're going to calculate your regression values, like your A, your B, and your R. You will find them under the regression. Your coefficient of determination R squared, once you calculate R, you're going to press X squared button to get your R squared. The mean max, don't have to worry about that. So once we have pressed uh, shift one, then we get this. Then you can press five to get the A, R, five, uh, Y hat and the B. So when we estimated the value of four, we press, we're going to press the Y hat to estimate or predict a new value. And that is the menu for not, oh gosh, this is not Casio, it's not sharp, it's Casio. That's way, that's the other error that I need to fix. This is Casio. For a sharp calculator, yours, the sharp calculator has all the values in front. You will see they are visible everywhere. You are able to see all the values. So, yours, you need to press the mode button and then press one and your calculator will be in state mode and then you will have SD and then you will have a line. You're going to select line where it says line. You're going to select where it says line and your calculator, once you do that, it will say step one. So you're ready to capture the data. For you, your data won't be visible when you capture it. So you want to get a table. The two important button you need to use is the store, which is the second button there where I am, and the M plus, which is the last button there, on top of the closing and the opening brackets. Those two buttons there, store, S-T-O, and the M plus, which is that are the two most important buttons you're going to use. So you're going to press four, if we capture this, you press four and you press STO and then you press five and then you press M plus. So it's four, store, five, M plus. And then it will say data set one. And you continue, two, store, three, M plus, data set two. And until you capture all the values. For you, it's easy to calculate the, st the, the, the states because all your states are visible on your calculator in blue. Everywhere where you see blue, you will need to press first the alpha button. So let's say we want to calculate, uh, you want to calculate the mean, your mean, I think it is on button number four for the X, the mean of x, the mean of y will be on button number five and so forth. And also you will be able to see the summation of x and y and the summation of x squared. You can calculate them from there. The r and the a and the b on your calculator, a is on button number one and b is on button, sorry, on, cl on closing button uh, bracket, the open bracket, sorry. Open bracket is A and close bracket is B. Your R, I think R is on the division sign. If we want to estimate the value of Y, we use the close bracket. Okay, so the same will apply with the financial calculator. The values are in front and you just follow the same step. 
So for those who are using the financial calculator, you don't have a store, but you have a, a bracket with X and Y. That is your store. So you say for that button, X and Y, and you press the M, enter. You also don't have M plus, but you have the enter. So you will use those two buttons there. Also, your values are just in front, A, B, and R. And when you estimate, there is an estimate on the on one of those values. I think on the delete, nope, it's on there. Close, open bracket. Uh, and then the summation and the mean are on the number buttons. You also press the alpha to get to them. And that is one way of doing the activities. The other way, okay, I need to discard. <sighs> Let me open my calculator. And I need to open both of the calculators and the Excel spreadsheet that I sent you. Just give me a second. For some reason, I need a step I want to show you is let's share my screen my entire screen is the excel sheet okay so on the excel sheet you will notice that I already did my uh, excel output but I, I will I will redo it so that I can show you how to get there uh, in case you want to start from the beginning so on this, uh, actually, you will notice that I, the, the, the values I have here are different from the ones that are on the, the presentation. I made that purposely because um, when I did the Excel spreadsheet, this output, I already added a line. But in order for us to get the same values that we had on this Excel spreadsheet, I will show you how to to do that. So what I did was given the values because these are the values that you will be given. I calculated the sum, which is the same as what you saw the way we had the total summation on the um, on the PowerPoint. Uh, if I go to our table, I'm going to use this one a lot so I can just come to this one because I'm going to use this one to demonstrate. So this summations there, you will notice that they will be the same as the one that I have there. So I went on and I calculated, let's make this bigger so that everybody can see properly. So I went and I calculated the summation of those values there and I calculated the sum X by just multiplying that value with this value X times Y and I did the X squared which is just Y squared or 1 times 1 which will give you the same thing and the Y squared as well and then it calculates the summation. And then what I did was you can read the instructions as well, because on the instruction, I'm telling you what you need to do. Let's say, for example, you have additional information or uh, your rows, there are 10 of them. 
So if you look at this, I only have six because here it counts the number of records that I have. In order for you not to mess up the whole spreadsheet, if I need to add a new value or delete a new row, you need to start clicking from B and highlighting that uh, the, the cells. So you, you click and you highlight. So you need to make sure that you know what how to use your Excel. You click and highlight and you right click and you go to delete and you say delete and it, it, it must go up. So only those ones. So as you can see, everything stays the same as I had it before, uh, except for this one. Ha. Okay, so except for that one, because then now it's shifted. But that is literally what you need to be doing. So if you're adding more values, you just highlight from B and you just go and say insert and you say down. Don't drag it for until the end because then you're messing up all the calculations and then you will have a line and then you can add your new values on today and so forth and so forth. I'm going to go back because I, I want to have the same information on, on here. So what I did was calculate the intercept like we had on our presentation. We have the slope, the mean of y, all of them, the way they are. I went and I calculated each and every one of them. And I'm just showing you the formula in case you don't understand how we calculated it there. So you can see, um, I'm saying C 10 times C Y. So you will just look at that it will be for B one. It just says what I am doing right. Yeah. So it just tells you that I am taking those values as by this. So it says the summation of X and Y, which is the E E Y N multiplying that with an N minus uh, all those things. So I'm just doing this whole calculation there. Anyway, that's what I am doing there. And it gets the value of 0 0.644. And then I do the same with the mean of X. The mean of X is just taking the X value divided by how many they are. The mean of Y is also taking the Y value divided by how many they are. The B0, remember B0 is, the B0 is your mean of Y minus the intercept. Oh, sorry, minus the slope times the mean of X, which are all those values that I do. So it's 8.883 min minus, 0 0.64 times 2.83. That's all what I'm doing there. And your regression line, which is that I'm just taking the answer for B0 plus the answer for B1 and multiplying it by X. Now, here you will have a challenge because if the answer here is negative, you will still have this plus there because this is literally manually added. So you need to know that the answer you will get here will be negative. So you will have plus minus that which will, in your mind, you should know that a plus and a minus equi equals a minus. So you just need to know that in your mind so that when you look at the regression line, you don't get confused with the plus again. So you know that that is a minus. OK, so that's what I did. So in terms of the regression line or the correlation of correlation, uh, coefficient of correlation as well, I used the same formula. I calculated it manually like that by using that. And R squared, here you can see that it's just that value squared, and that gives you your coefficient of correlation. Now, in terms of the other values, like your SSR and your 
SSE and your SST, because I know that we want to calculate SSR and SST using the sum square measures, then I use the formulas. So you can see there, I went and I calculated the estimated value. So this estimated value is this X, uh, the Y hat. So I'm replacing the X value with the actual X value that we have in order to calculate the Y hat. So I just take that plus that. Uh, times the X value for all the values and you can see that I've just done it for all of them. So it's just the same. Replace, replace, replace. So if you want to estimate a new value, let's say a new value is four, you can do the same. So you just come here and put four and then take this and then place it here. Just copy and paste. It will create your new four as well. Then I went and I calculated all these summations. I'm not going to go into the formula of how I calculated them, but you can see that it's just your um, your y minus your y hat squared. So that's what I did for all of for all of the observation, and then I did the summation because the SSE is the summation of that. I did the same with SSR. You can see that it's your y hat minus the mean, and the mean you will see the mean is highlighted mean of y, and I did it for all of them as well and your SST as well. So this is your observation Y minus the mean. Uh, mean is highlighted there. And I did it for all of them and the summations. And then to calculate SSR, oh, sorry, before I calculate the SSR, remember SST is SSE plus SSR. I also went and validated that just by adding those two values to see if they give me the same as SST. Then to calculate R squared, I'm using SSR divide by SST, which is just that. So taking the summation of SSR divided by the summation of SST gives me my R. As you can see there, it's the same as that. OK, so because this one is five decimals, I can move it to three decimals. You will see that it looks exactly the same. Depending on what the options are in the exam or your answer sheet, you just look at how you round off. So reason being why I kept the same information is because I wanted because they, the Excel output, it uses the same information. So I just want to show you that all the values that we calculated manually, they correspond to the values that we have. Our R, we calculated it. It was 0, 0,339. As you can see, that it corresponds. Our R squared, we find that it's 0, 0,115, which is the same as what we, we got with the Excel output. Our B0, which is 7,10, which is the same, and our B1 are the same. How do I get there? Remember the data analysis part? You need to be able to have that data analysis. So to calculate that, we go to data analysis, and you look for regression, and you click OK. Then we need to select our X value. So I always use the labels as well because they help with labeling on the table. And I must select also that that I've selected the labels. So I also selected the row the wrong numbers. So this is the Y range. So I need to select Y only the values without the summations, the X value only the values without the summation. I uh, leave everything within the confidence interval for now. I don't have to select anything else because I'm not interested in those things. The output, uh, 
you remember if you want it on the same sheet as this you just select output and then it will put it on the same output i also want it here so i'm going to select output range and then i'm gonna scroll to oh i cannot scroll to the end oh sorry okay I can scroll and then I want to put it just there. So I'm just going to click on any row or any column. Regression Y and X have the same number of, okay. Let's see. So that is our Y. Let's go select our X and see what went wrong. OK. And there is our Excel output done. As you can see, the values look exactly the same as the one that I have on the table. And in this instance, And that's how you can use Excel to do your, your calculations. I just want to show you using Excel. Let's go to the exercise. There are some exercise where we can look. At this one, the table is too long. Don't we have one exercise with no, no tables? How many values we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It might take me forever, but nothing bad for a good challenge. I said how many columns? Two, four, six, eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. So I just need to add two lines. Okay, so now the challenge becomes capturing all the information that I need. So, okay, I'll start with the axis. Five, two, twelve, nine, fifteen, six, five. And 60. Ah, I didn't move. 25 and 60. And my N is 8. I'm happy with that. Doing the same here. 640, 560, 420, and 600. Now, I need to adjust. Oh, I don't have to adjust anything because all the calculations are working. <clears throat> and I, let me make it bigger. So for this one, the challenge now becomes the Excel because I don't have another data to validate this. I can use the same. So I can say. Just to make sure that my calculations here from my tables are the same. <clears throat> so my X. My Y. 
to reselect them. And my X. And my output range. I'm going to replace the one that we had there. It's fine. So it was asking if I want to overwrite. Yes, I want to overwrite. I can just hide all these ones because I don't need them. Actually, I can just delete them because I don't need them anymore. Unless if I deleted some of the information I need. Okay, so we can validate our answers, our solutions that we got to make sure that everything is wonky dory. So let's see, what did I do here? I see that I'm not getting the right. I'm not getting the same answers. Let's see, do we? Get the same answer. Oops. Oopsie Daisy. Oopsie. Because some of the things are just manually populated here. Like the X. That's why it doesn't move nicely. Because it's just the picture that I brought in. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 So we know what we have. So we can go and answer the questions. So just to validate the answers that we have, uh, our R. So on an Excel spreadsheet, your R, you won't be able to see on Excel whether your R is positive or negative. The important thing is looking at the slope. So the slope will have a negative value. So therefore it means your R here is also negative. You must pay attention to that. On Excel, the R here is not automatically negative. So you need to look at the slope to know what direction your R is. So your R, if I look at my R, is 0 0.7877. Which is the same, my R squared are the same, my intercept, which is 766, and the slope is 15.47, uh, which are the same. So it means it worked. So we can go and answer the questions given to us. So this one, I'm just going to make this very small. Because the bigger they are, the bigger they they look. Uh, something didn't work out well here because I think some of the calculations they didn't work because when I moved things around, this didn't move correctly because I can see that one is 36, 31, and this is 20. So something didn't work well. Anyway, don't worry too much about that. Don't worry about the bottom part because all the information you need are just here. Okay, so let's go answer the question that we were given. So we can either use the output of Excel or we can use the manually calculated values which we have in front of us right here with the regression line. So we have our regression line, we have our slope, we have our mean, we have our uh, slope, our intercept, and we have our coefficient of correlation and our R squared. So I'm just going to make this fit so that everything is visible. just need the definitions. Okay, so which one of the following statement is incorrect? The insurance premium de uh, depends on the driving experience. So we know that uh, 
when the values of so we saying experience is related to your uh, uh, premium. That's that statement, what it's saying. So number two, it says the Y intercept, which is the B zero. The Y intercept is seven 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 six six point six six. That's correct because that's what we got. So the Y intercept here, uh, I cannot write because I'm in a in a view mode. Okay, so let's make it non-view mode. And increase. I cannot increase the, the side. I can hide. Oh, yeah. No, I cannot hide. Okay, I hope you are able to see. <clears throat> okay, the slope is minus 15 point, so our slope, which is minus 15.478, which is correct, so that is correct, that is correct. I also can write again. using white that's correct that's correct so far number four it says there is a negative relationship between the relationships we can see by looking at the slope and by looking at r that there is a negative relationship because the slope it's minus and the r is negative so that is correct and it says 77.77 percent of total variation in the independent variable is explained by the independent variable is there 77 percent so to get 77 percent we can convert our value to a percentage and that is and it is two decimals Two decimals, not three two, and that is the incorrect one. Sorry, I forgot to also mark that one. It's correct. That is the incorrect one, and that's how you will use your Excel to do that. On Saturday, I will show you how to use both your calculators, but I've given you the steps. You can try them, and if you still struggling uh, and then i will show you how to to use them so in a way i can in the last four minutes that are left i can quickly show you the cashier or the sharp let's use the sharp one so let's use the sharp to do this one that we have the answers to so you put your calculator to mode and you will press one and press one again, which is the line, and put the values one, store, four, and plus, and it will say data set one. If you make a mistake, you just go second function CA, it will clear your calculator and you'll start from the beginning. Three, store, six, and plus, five, store, 10 and plus 5 store 12 and plus 1 store 13 and plus and I'm done there are five to get the summations just press on and off alpha the sum of x and y equal there is 145 sum of x squared uh, you can clear your calculator again say alpha sum of x squared is on the plus or minus sum of x squared equal 
and that's 61. Sum of x, uh, sum of y squared, you just do alpha y squared. Sum of x, alpha 2. Sum of x, alpha dot. Sum of y, alpha uh, squared, and so forth. The mean, number 4. Alpha 4 will give you the mean of x, and alpha uh, 7 will give you the mean of y. So everything is right here. So now let's go find the coefficient of correlation. So let's go to the next slide. So let's go find all of this. So to do that, alpha A, remember A is the intercept. It should give me 7, 125 equal 7, 125. The slope, which is B, alpha, close bracket, which is B, equal 0, 0,625. Um, and then uh, the coefficient of correlation. Remember, we found it, it was 0, 0,3227. So you do the same alpha divide by, which gives you R equal 0, 0,327. Remember when we used the estimate and we went and we found the estimate of four. Let's do that. So to get the estimate for four, we press first the value that we want to estimate. So we want to estimate four. So we press four first, then you go alpha, and then you press the close bracket, which is the Y copy, which will be, uh, sorry, not alpha, sorry, my, my, my bad. You press four because it's orange, you press second function, and then you press the y, that y copy, it will represent the y hat, uh, and then press equal. Oh, what did I do? For, sorry, second function, y hat, and there it is, 9.625. Remember, we found that by substituting the value of four, onto this formula. So if you replace X by four, you will get 9.625. So let's go back, calculate R, alpha R equal, calculate the coefficient of determination, squared, there is R squared, equal 0, 0.14. One, one for two, and that's the beauty. You can use your form, your calculator to do all that. So bear with me the five minutes so that I can show you with the last calculator as well. So with Casio, you you can see that it it goes quick, quick. Within a minute, you are done. So I used four minutes to answer. A whole lot of questions so let's see if this one can do so in this one you go mode and then you press that which is two then you press two again for one plus i var so here we say one equal remember we're going to go x values first three equal five equal five equal and one equal and there are five then go up, 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 up until you get to line one and go right. <clears throat> and then four equal, six equal, 10 equal, 12 equal, 13 equal, and they are all. And I can go on and off the calculator. Shift, start which is button number one, and I can go and look for the sum square, which is on button number three. And you can press the X squared, which is, we should get 61, which is on button number one, and I just press one, equal, that's 61. Getting the sum, sum of X and Y, shift, start, three sum, and sum of X and Y is on button number five, which should give me 45 equal 145. 
Okay. Finding the mean. Go shift, start, one for var, or oh, sorry, four for var. There is your mean, your standard deviation for, oh, sorry. The mean of X, the mean of Y, and your N if you want to know how many records you have. So the mean for X is two, we should get three equal. So if you didn't clear your calculator, remember to always press the equal button. So you can go clear your calculator and go back shift, start. And now let's go to the rack, which is five. And then we want the intercept, which is A. Let's go to intercept. We know that intercept is A. We should get 7.125. So 1 equal 7.125. To get the slope, shift, set, 5 for reg, and B is 2 equal 0.625. If I want the R, which is my coefficient of determination, or oh, sorry, my coefficient of correlation, shift, start, five, reg, which is R is on button number three, equal 0, 0.3227. If I want to estimate the value of four, of y by making x equals to 4 shift ah, sorry before i press shift always press the number 4 shift start 5 estimating y hat is number 5 and there is 4 y hat equal 9 comma 6 to 5 Within three minutes, I am done with all those questions that they were asking. And that concludes today's session. I know that we didn't do a lot of activities or exercise. Don't worry, we will do that on Saturday. Please go and practice so that on Saturday when we go through the questions, you are able to answer them. As you can see, there will be questions that looks like this that only uses the sum square measures. So the summations. So you need to make sure that you know how to use the summations, the formulas as well, and not rely on the calculator. You will also get questions, theoretical questions. Or you will get questions where you have to estimate. So for this one, we could estimate the value of our new value, which is the new value. Yeah, they say 10 years. So we can go and estimate 10 years of those values. And um, what else? And you should be able to, to, to answer questions where you are given X and Y value and interpreting your slope and your intercepts are also part of those discussion and interpreting the coefficient of correlation but we'll look at more ex activities or exercises on on saturday okay and that concludes today's session any question before we wrap up and go home or and go to sleep I'm um, good, thanks, Lizzie. No, no, thank you. No worries. Okay. I'm, thank I'm you. Okay. I'm going to take your formulas and I'm going to work out the relationship issues now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if there are no questions, thank you for coming. See you on Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Ms. Liz. Bye.